morning students welcome back to our class that is international business today we are going to start with the new unit that is second unit in second unit we are going to start with the new topic that is global business how the international business will takes place and what are the national regulations rules and regulations in the country or host country so the rationale for government or intervention and their vision this is really our topic so it is important to understand the reasons and the ways in which government intervene in international business because it is a company has to succeed in the international market it has to formulate and implement winning strategies so here are some reasons uh, the that means the reasons for government intervention see it can develop such winning strategies only when it has through knowledge of the cultural political legal and economic environment of the country which it is wishes to do business with the in formulating and implementing political and economic strategies are given below that means here two strategies are there what are those the political arguments for government intervention and the economic arguments for government intervention Uh, so we'll go one by one. What does uh, political argument government uh, intervention is there? We we'll learn now. So the government uh, political argument uh, that means argue for government intervention from the point of view of national security, uh, protecting industries, protecting jobs, retaliation. So national security means what? The strategy industries from the point of view of national security. should be run by the government these industries are like defense electronic semiconductors postal railways and the government runs the industries even in earlier market economics like usa and japan even after liberal liberalization and globalization of india economic government in india uh, reserve eight strategic industries for exclusively public sector operations So there are some things will be there which are under the control of the national security, like defense, army, military, atomic, mm, uh, like postal, railways, semiconductor, electronics, etc. Will be there. Now, protecting security, uh, protecting uh, industries. I can say here, uh, security of industries. I N D U S T R I E S, industries. Okay. So here, yeah, yes. So what is happening here? uh this is one of the major objective of the government concern and it is to protect the domestic industry from the foreign competitors most of the small scale industries become sick after the entry of foreign industries so before why the when the foreign countries are uh, starting their industries in the other countries in our country our country will become our product or our industry will become sick so we should not have to give a chance other people to come and adjust within the business So after entering of the cheap product from China and East Asia countries into Indian market, the politicians argue the government should not. That means they should have to interfere in the business. That will become very easy and tough. Now protecting job, the economic liberalisation in Asia that too too many industries are there that are downsizing of larger industries and many industries are closing day by day. The sourcing of employees, privatisation of public sector units are coming so. so this is to turn reduce the number of jobs in the country so protecting job is very important that means the industry should have to run or the public sector should have to run for the long term and with a good bias so that the jobs will be there now retaliation the foreign business need to be treated and should be dealt with a tough approach only government can deal with a tough approach and attitude with the foreign business not only that government can do this due to power to take tough decisions and availability of machinery to implement the decisions otherwise foreign businesses control the domestic business firms as the politicians argue for the government in business these things will be taken place now next one is economic arguments for government sectors it includes in fact industrial argument and strategic trade policy so in fact industry argument is nothing but when the industry is in the infant stage of its life cycle it needs protection from the foreign competitors in fact indian government protected our industry during uh, 1947 to 1990 
so the private people and the private industries cannot invent or invest heavy during infant stage therefore government should interfere in business to provide capital and industry facilities that's the reason in fact it means that in fact stage before the industry is going to take place so whenever the business want to start the other competition should not be there as the government indian government sector should have to grow for the long term next one is strategy trade policy in the strategic trade policy what is happening see uh, according to this policy i can say that the government intervention is essential in the form of subsidies like uh, the government should fall in the subsidies like rice uh, oil tea basic general items wheat jowar all these things the government should provide subsidies to certain domestic farms which have to come to Competitive advantage. That means these farms with low cost advantage will move to the foreign markets, get the first mover advantages. Thus, government should use subsidies to support promising farms. Those are dynamic in the emerging market. Now, we will discuss some uh, economic reasons for government intervention. Why uh, uh, intervention of the government should be there? Because of industrialization argument. That means uh, it prevent unemployment infant industry argument industrialization argument economics relationship with others peoples yes now what are those here economic reason that means prevent an unemployment means what see this is uh, one of the pressure groups that prevail upon the government to intervene the international business is unemployment that means they wish the government to prevent imports so that the local production may go up creating more and more employment but import restrictions bring out retaliation from the other countries so we have to be very careful if the protection given to the industry should improve efficiency lot of money has to be spent on the research and development which is in turn pushes up cost so this is very hard thing next infant industry uh, infant industry is nothing but Several countries went in, went for protecting the home industries, hoping that those infant industries will become robust and competent in protected from foreign competitions in their infant stage. So, if domestic markets are kept open only for the home industry, it may grow big eventually, gain economics of scale, its workers become competent by gaining experience. The net weight of this will be that of the industry become globally competent. These are the Prevention why the government should interfere in the industries and then industrialization argument is nothing but uh, developed countries such as the United States, Japan, and many other countries made their industrial base stronger by protection. Why? Because uh, the emerging uh, emerging nations follows their footsteps and wish to develop their industries through preventing foreign goods and entering their countries. Like uh, they believe that uh, surplus workers can more easily increase manufacturing output than they can uh, increase agricultural growth. Inflows of the foreign investment in the industrial area will promote growth. Next thing, prices and sales of traditional agricultural products and raw materials fluctuate too much. At last, markets for industrial products will grow faster than markets for agriculture that is primary products it is their belief that more than the agriculture sector the uh, industry will grow very fast a greater defense i mean dependence on manufacturing does not guarantee diversification or stable export earnings earnings i can say these are the things now uh, emerging economics impose restrictions on the imports and encourage local production which is known as import substitution which is totally collapsing the economy now last one economic relationship with our countries see the government will impose trade restrictions to improve their relative positions they buy no more than that other countries buy from them that means because of trade accounts in a major part of the balance of payments governments may modify what would you have an export or import in a free market? Governments may attract the path and persuade MNCs to establish units in their countries rather than exporting products to them. These are the things we have to be very careful now. Now, 
economic rations for government invention why in these are the non economic that means no profit will be there but the government should enter uh, here i mean intervention should be very important that maintain the essential industries uh, in every economic there are certain industries which are crucial for the economic well being of the country uh, that all these industries need some raw materials or components which may which they cannot survive so the country cannot depend on import of the of this raw materials from the foreign country so unless some important restrictions are imposed and the local industry is not protected these essential industries may not survive and for those for the long term next one is dealing with unfriendly countries see certain countries concern about security of and use defenses or governments to prevent exports even to friendly countries of strategies uh, goods that might <coughs> fall into the hands of potential enemies or that might be in short supply logistically export constraints may be valid if the exporting countries assume there will be no restrictions that prevent it from securing even more essential goods for the potential importing countries now the maintenance spheres of influence see there are many example of government actions uh, on trade to support uh, spheres of influence see, government frequently give aid and credits to and encourage import from countries that join a political alliance or vote a certain way within the international boundaries simple then prevailing cultures and national identity national sovereignty and the goal of self respect preservation the need for national security the fostering and national prosperity uh, and enhancing the prestige host country pressures groups all these things are the non uh, uh, government and i mean non economic government intervention where it is important for us now the major strategies nowadays like job training or phoning see when government interview in the business in an informal way often with a legal bias biases or basis it is called a job warning government uses this form of intervention to prevent an act that the legal is perceived contract to their own interest or goals see the what are the main purpose is to gain trade control government's resort to several policies such are some justified and some without much bias these controls are broadly classified into this tariff barriers and non tariff barriers see by local restrictions non tariff barriers subsidies operating conditions ownership conditions by force take over these are the things where uh, the structures will be made for the international business i mean for the interfering on the government into the industry next next topic is was uh, forms of trade regulations at national level see what is happening here the government announces their trade policies with regard to the following time to time and these are called the instrumental of trade policy these are the instrument of trade policy like tariffs first one is tariffs what do you mean by tariffs tariffs are nothing but kind of tax like tariffs refers to the tax imposed on imports when the goods are importing from one country to another country the tariffs are the taxes are imposed on them then tariffs are of two types first one is specific tariff second one is adva lorin tariffs special tariffs are levied as a fixed charges for each unit of the product imported for example a tariff of rupees 1000 on each tv imported then the tariff revealed as portion of the value of the imported goods is called valorin tariff for example imposition of 30% tax on the value of the computers imported some th- tariffs are fixed which are Uh, not going to change and those are specific tariffs which are ad valorem tariffs which are, are going to be charged on the cost of the value of the goods so the purpose of tariffs is to protect the domestic industry by increasing the cost of the imported goods so the government of india imposes tariffs to protect domestic automobile industry sugar industry cement industry and steel industry so advantages of tariffs are nothing but government of the importing country industry of the importing country jobs in domestic country are saved business for the ancillary industry and servicing market intermediation is also protected see subsidies next one is subsidies so what is the main purpose of subsidies in order to increase domestic production or to protect the domestic 
producer in the foreign competitors. Governments pay to a domestic producer by reducing operation costs. Such payments are called subsidies. See, subsidies are different forms like cash grants, loans, advance at low rate of interest, tax holidays, government procurement of output at a higher rate, equity participation and supply of inputs at lower prices. Apart from that, some of the advantages of domestic products and subsidies like fixing the price at low level and high profit margin, entering the foreign market to provide employment, to develop the import and export, to develop the large scale economies in low cost, to develop the international competence, compete with the foreign product in the domestic market. These are the things. Next one is import quotas. In import quotas, what are the things are coming here? Uh, the import quota is nothing but a direct. Restrictions on the equity of goods which are imported into a country. These restrictions are imposed by issuing import license to certain farms and individuals to import certain quality of the goods. Like India had quotas, quotas of imports of various goods like car, motor, cycles, milk, etc. up to 31st March 2001. So, import quotas provide the protection to the domestic firms from the foreign competitors. Next one is voluntary export restraints. The voluntary export restraint is the opposite form of import quotas. It is a quota on exports of the domestic firm imposed by the exporting country. Exporting country imposes such restrictions mostly at the request of the importing countries. Like import quotas and voluntary quotas, I mean export restraints help the domestic firm by providing protection from the foreign competitions. This enhances the prices of import goods and make the domestic goods cheap. Next, local context requirement. See, it is a condition that requires some specific fraction of a product imported to be produced domestically. That means the requirement may be in physical terms nor are in the value terms. So, this helps to enhance the employment opportunities, utilization of local resources and economic activities. Last one, administrative policies. Administrative policy is nothing but that means the government in addition to quotas and other restrictions use formal and informal policies to restrict imports and boost exports administrative policies and are bureaucratic rules and procedures which are formulated to make it difficult to import to enter, enter the country. So Japan mostly uses the administrative policies. So by this we have just completed our two topics of the day in the second unit. An international business subject. So, I hope students will understand the concept and please mention your role numbers in the comment box. Thank you, have a nice day.